Okay. Um, today I have the honor of uh, introducing our guest speaker. Uh, we always have nominal guest speakers. Last year, Mr. Matthew gave an excellent address here before that, Mr. Friars and um, wife. my wife. <laughs> um, but we have great uh, guest speakers, and this year's guest speaker is no different. Um, I have, so <laughs> he, had, he came in a couple, uh, what, about a month ago, a month and a half ago to come speak with the boys, and he was, he was so compelling, like not just to the boys, but to me as well. Like, you ever heard somebody speak and you were motivated as an adult? Uh, he did that when he came and spoke to us, and I had just met him that day. I was like, dude, you gotta be the speaker. Um, he has some pretty awesome accomplishments. I'm sure he'll share those things with you. Um, one of which, he just received his PhD, and he reminded me, he said, Mr. Williams, uh, where's the DR in my, on my name <laughs> on the program? I'm like, oh man, I'm sorry. You worked way too hard not to get that DR in front of your name. So I apologize. I'm gonna print out a new one for you before nah. you leave. You <laughs> Make sure you have that program for your, for your record. Um, but uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker of the evening, uh, Dr. <laughs> Nehemiah Mabry. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Yeah, no problem. You don't have to print it out. <laughs> you just email it to me. Okay. <laughs> hey, fellas, y'all remember last time I came? Y'all remember? Yeah. I put y'all a chat. What did I say? I said, who are we? Greatness. Who remembers? Greatness. Greatness. Who are we? Greatness. Who are we? Greatness. Who are we? Greatness. And I said, who's the best in the world? We are. Who's the best in the world? We are. But what does it take? Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. What does it take? Hard work. Hard work. What does it take? Hard work. Who are we? Greatness. Who are we? Greatness. Who's the best in the world? We are. Who's the best in the world? We are. But what does it take? Hard work. What does it take? Hard work. All right, give yourself a hand. I'm glad y'all remember that. Well, I am so grateful to have been invited, Mr. Williams. I appreciate it. Um, I really admire the work that happens here with Helping Hands at Ram Road, uh, the work of Mr. Carr, Mr. Watson, um, and then also one that got us the principal as well, Mr. Jones, who, who I, whom I met at NC State. She was touring the library there, and I was doing some work with another colleague, and so that's kind of where the connection began, right there. Um, also, when they got the teachers in the room, the parents, a particular teacher, my fiance is with me, who was also an educator, um, and I was just telling Mr. Williams how I know that sometimes you don't see the results right away, but it's very impactful once you, down the road, look back and say, hey man, I inspired this person. I motivated them, I helped change their life, literally, right? So I'm just so thankful for this opportunity. But check it out, because I'm gonna tell you guys about something, and parents and family. There's this animal known as an antelope. Has anybody ever heard of an antelope? Antelope, right? So an antelope is kind of like a deer. It looks a little bit like a deer. It's different in some ways. Antelopes have horns, deers have antlers. It's just one example of how they're different. But antelopes are actually in Africa referred to as impala. Y'all heard the word impala when it comes to the car, right? Chevy impala. Right? So there's a car called Impala, but I'm talking about the animal, okay? So these animals, these Impalas, are very athletic. They can run speeds up to 37 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. Usain Bolt, y'all know Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world? He runs roughly about 30 miles an hour. But check this out. The Impala can run 37 miles per hour running zigzag. They have to run zigzag to get away from the, the leopards and the lions and everything that's chasing them. So this Impala is fast enough to beat Usain and Bolt in the race running zigzag. Not only that, but Impalas can jump. They got hops. If you read up on Impala, you go online, you'll find an Impala when they're running full speed, they can jump and clear a distance of about 33 feet. So they can jump from like here to maybe over there near the wall. That's how far an Impala can jump. But this is what's really impressive about impalas. Impalas can't just jump far, they can jump high. Impalas can jump when they're running at their peak about 10 feet in the air. 10 feet in the air. Now y'all know basketball players that jump pretty high, right? Who knows Blake Griffin? Blake Griffin can jump about 35 and a half inches. That's just about three feet. Blake Griffin, three feet. You know LeBron James, right? 
LeBron James got hot, doesn't he? LeBron James can jump about 44 inches. That's about three and a half, 3.67 feet in the air. Now, when I grew up, part of Mr. Williams, Mr. Watson, we knew about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan could jump so high, it looked like he was flying. Michael Jordan jumped about 46 inches in the air, just under four feet. So these Impalas can jump 10 feet. So they can almost jump as high as Blake Griffin, LeBron James, and Michael Jordan combined. But there's something really weird about that. Why don't you guys ask me, what's weird though? What's weird though? What's weird? What's weird? All right, here you go, this is what's weird, right? So these Impalas in Africa, a long time ago, they found out if they wanted to try to herd these Impalas and keep them together, and they wanted to put them in a fence, that they didn't have to put the fence about 10 feet high. Even though they can jump 10 feet, they realized that they only had to put it no more than about six feet high, sometimes even less. These Impalas could jump this high, but to keep them enclosed, contained, they only needed a fence that was about six feet high. And then that, became, that began to be known as the African Impala enclosure. And the reason why they would never jump this fence and they would stay right where they are is because Impalas, for some reason, didn't jump when they couldn't see where their feet would land. So even though this is six feet high, they can jump this high, they had just no way of comprehending how they could actually land on the other side. And so guess what they would do? They would stay right there. Eating the same grass, playing the same games, doing the same stuff. Today, some of us, some of you, are like those in Paul. We don't realize how high we can jump, and so these are limits, there are limits about us, around us that are nowhere near our potential, but because we can't see what it's like to land on the other side, sometimes we stay around, eating the same grass, playing the same games, and doing the same stuff. But what if that Impala, who can jump almost as high as Blake Griffin, LeBron James, and Michael Jordan combined, actually tried to jump their fence? Do you think you would clear it? But for some reason, it only takes a six foot fence to stop an Impala that can jump 10 feet high to stay in the same area. But what if it jumps? What if you jump? What if you realize that you have the potential to go higher than the limits that people or that your environment may seem to place on you? Do you want to go high? Do you want to jump the limits? So I'm going to tell you guys three things really quick to help you jump the fence that is serving as a limit to you. Three things. You ready? Number one is you got to prepare. What did I say? Prepare. 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 All right, so these basketball players that I talked about, none of them just wake up in the morning, go to the game, and just start dunking on people right away. What do you see them doing before the game? They start stretching, right? And what you see on TV is only like a small percentage of what they actually do on the, t on the, game, on the uh, floor. They're in the gym, putting up free throws, right? They're running drills, working on their what? Their handles. They're working on their handles. They're preparing. So if you're going to one day get older, move to middle school, move to high school, move to college, and jump these limits, you're going to have to prepare. How do you prepare? Well, there are going to be some books that you have to read. There are going to be some classes. What did I say? Classes, classes that you're going to have to go to. There are going to be some mentors that you have to link up with and understand from. Because you need to prepare because there's going to be a time where you are going to try to jump these limits and hop this fence. But first, you have to prepare. Number two. Number two is don't let fear affect your faith. What did I say? Don't let fear affect your faith. All right, so I'm talking about fear, all right? Remember I said Impala's won't jump the fence because they don't see how, where their feet will land? So sometimes you are not going to be or going to be afraid to jump the fence because you can't quite describe what it's like on the other side. That's called fear. Sometimes fear will come from your haters. Sometimes fear might even come from like your family and your close friends. Sometimes fear might be inside your own head. But you can't let fear affect your what? Faith. You have to know 
that it's possible. You have to know that what you envision is actually something that you can achieve. And so when you have this faith that's bigger than your fear, you kind of find out that this fear that said you couldn't do it was like Michael Jordan said, just an illusion. These limits sometimes are just lies. That fence that's around you is actually much lower than you can achieve. I'll give you an example. I always want to start my business. I always want to start a business. I said, I want to own my own business. And so one day I said, man, I'm going to start making videos. I'm going to start recording people. And then I did it and people start asking me, hey, can you do this for this? We'll pay you to do this, that, and the other. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I think I'm just doing them a little favor. But then eventually somebody starts saying, hey, you know, I like your business. I'm like, I don't have a business yet. I don't even know how to start a business. I don't, I don't know what to do. I mean, I know how to do something that people want to pay for, but I don't know how to start a business. So I started doing research, right? In my mind, people who start a business need a whole lot of money. They need to know a whole lot of people. They just need to be somebody great. But eventually I found a mentor that told me how to start my business. Say, said, look, you're going to fill out this sheet. You're going to go to the Secretary of State downtown. You're going to turn it in. You're going to pay $25, and then you'll be an official business. And I said, what? That's it? Yeah, take this sheet, fill it out, go downtown, turn it into Secretary of State, and then you have a business. So I did it. My heart was beating fast. I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't know. I feel like there's something else to do. I went in, put in the form. She, she looked at it. She said, it's all right. She said, you, how are you going to pay? I said, here's $25 cash. I gave it to her. And she stamped it and said, all right, good job. And I said, wait. So, like, I got my own business now? <laughs> you mean to tell me, like, that's, that's how high the fence was. What you will find out is these things that people say you can't do is sometimes because they feel like they can't do it. Sometimes people will tell you, look, you can't go on the other side of that fence because they've never been on the other side of the fence. And so they want you to think that, hey, we have to stay inside the fence, eat the same grass, play the same game, do the same stuff. But, brothers, if you... Do not let fear affect your faith. You will find that on the other side of that fence are things that you could have had all along. So number one, prepare. Number two, don't let fears affect your what? Faith. Faith. And number three, just do it. I don't know about Nike, right? <laughs> just do it. Just jump. Just go for it. You prepare, right? You've gotten the mentors, you've read the books, you've went to class, now what are you waiting for? Just do it. There's gonna come a time where you're gonna be ready to, to embark upon your dream, and then all you have to do is jump. Just do it. Make the leap. Why not? You can jump 10 feet high, but, but the fence is only six feet, so just jump. I want you to know that if you get in your mind today that you have the potential to exceed far beyond those limits. You will achieve things that you were at one that you at one point never thought was possible. I never thought I would have a PhD. Never. I thought PhD were people with long white beards. <laughs> I thought those were people who are doctors. Never would I ever saw myself in this position. But my brothers, you can do it if you realize that if you prepare, that these fears are just a lie and then you just make the leap, man, one of day, you're gonna write that book. People are gonna be buying it, they're gonna say, oh man, I love this book that you wrote. One day, you're gonna own your own business. One day, you're gonna get that degree. One day, you're gonna achieve things that you never thought was possible. Why? Because you made the leap. So that's my, that's, my, that's my message to you today, very simple. You can remember the three points, but most importantly, I just want to tell you all, look, just make the leap. As you prepare, as you go through school, as you think about what you want to achieve, don't let the limits that your environment, that, that, that society at times, or, or anyone else try to put on you, get you to think that you can't excel beyond it. I want to tell you today, that you can make the leap. And on the other side of that fence is the life you've always dreamed of. Before I go, I want to quote a poem from Marianne Williamson. This is from a book she wrote, Return to Love. And she talks about our greatest fear. Because that's what it's about, right? Fear sometimes paralyzes. That's why these impalas don't jump the fence, because they don't know where their feet are going to land. 
But she says this, the poem goes like this. It says, our greatest fear, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be, to be talented, to be brilliant, to be fabulous? Well, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that people don't feel insecure around you. You were made to manifest the glory of God that is within you, and it's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same thing. And as you, young men, parents, teachers, family, as we are liberated from our fear, we automatically liberate others. Thank you so much. That's my time.